when I saw him in the tunnel, and he's all by himself, and he's talking to himself, and all of a sudden he says, and some of the stuff we hear before becomes cliche, but it just becomes, you know, another, just more noise, another sound bite. But it wasn't a sound bite with him. I saw him in the tunnel, and when he said it, I, I just could sense the realness of it. He said, let's go. This is my effing house. This is my effing house. He literally meant it. I, I really believe it, that in his mind, what I talked about, that he went to another room in the house, that this is my house. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I was put. And and I'm going to go run things in my house. And you could see how clear his mind was, his his eyes. I said, wow, this guy's, you know, we like to say locked in, right? Focus locked in. But this guy's locked in. This guy is where he needs to be. And then he had the right fight plan. He had to be responsible but here's the difference. Nobody touched on this. And they got the greatest commentators in the world. But they touched on everything else that mattered anyway. But here's the thing for me, Ken. He went out there and he had to, we thought, control range, give angles, whatever. Keep this tremendous puncher from being set. Don't make any mistakes. Be responsible. But at the same time, he had to have an offensive posture too. Not with defensive responsibility. But it had to be an offensive response, posture with defensive responsibility, where he gave the guy something to think about, where he wasn't just moving, where he was set to punch, where he wasn't just running, so to speak, where the guy could catch him on the way out, where the guy could track him down, where the guy could bully him around, where the guy could grow even more, knowing that that he you know that he controlled him. He had to be m- smart control range, but the best of both worlds. He had to be set, too, to offer offense, to get his respect, to be able to capitalize when that moment would come. And you know what he did? You've been in the gym with me. You've heard me use this phrase. He became a jaguar. He grabbed the... He, his feet became jaguar claws, became leopard claws, where he, he clawed into the floor. He still stepped off, but he didn't he didn't skate off. He didn't run off. He stepped off. He grabbed a hold and dug into the floor where he had the strength of the floor, where he was set underneath him to punch. Where the other guy knew it. Where the other guy couldn't take complete liberties. He set he he set a pattern, a tone in that first round. You know what the first round was all about? It was all about exercising the ghost, chasing the ghost from past out of his attic. Get the hell out of my freaking attic, you son of a beast. Get out of my attic. And he set the tone by having a round where it was a very close round, but it didn't matter. It was a competitive close round, but it was a round he needed to exercise the ghost to get to the next stage of this fight. And he believed that there was going to be a moment he believed that that it was that was ordained that there's going to be a moment and then what happens so he gets to he he goes back to his corner with the confidence with the ghost removed that's what he needed it didn't matter if he won the round he went back that he had that kind of round and now he comes out for the second round and there's no doubt the bigger stronger monster pereira is winning. He hurts him with a leg kick. He hits him with a leg kick. He puts him up against the ropes or in in reality, the the cage. He puts him up against the cage. He hits him a good body shot. I don't know if anybody saw that. And and he hit him with a knee, but it wasn't, nothing was purely clean, but it was enough, it was enough to, to impact him. He hit him with some punches. It impacted him, but it wasn't clean, clean. He was fine. He was good. He was still together. His vision was there. He had the night goggles on. He was seeing everything. And at that moment, I transported somewhere else in my mind. You know where I transported? Where I looked at this. I said, oh my God, this is eerily 
similar and reminiscent of something that I know, something I've seen before. And you know what it was? What's Zaire. That? It was Zaire. It was George Foreman and Muhammad Ali, and Ali late in the fight, playing the rope-a-dope, and all the big shots from the monster. And Pereira's the monster, the big bully, if you will, the big powerful guy that could knock a tree down. He, he, he was Foreman. He represented Foreman. Pereira was Foreman and undefeated the whole thing. And he's throwing these, these shots, you know, and he's on the rope. I know it's not the rope, it was the cage. He was doing the cage of dope. And he's doing the cage of dope, he's against the cage. And, and I'm watching him, I said, oh my goodness, oh my God. He's Ali right now. He's Muhammad Ali, the mindset, everything. Where he's got this monster in front of him. He knows what he's going to do. He knows the moment's going to come. He knows he's going to get a moment. He's not terrified. He's not terribly shaken. He got buzzed a little. He's fine. He's together. He's looking for that moment. He's searching for that moment. He's in the place he needs to be. And then all of a sudden, bang! And you know why he bang? Because he made a basic mistake that a lot of these guys in boxing make and in MMA. Where, there it is. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much. And uh, don't run it. Don't run it. Wait till I tell you. Wait till I tell you. Beautiful. He made a mistake. And there it is. There's the proof to the put. There's, there, there, you can't get more proof than what I'm saying. I'm saying it and I'm showing it. He made a mistake that is a taboo thing in my gym. And when I teach a fighter, the one thing they can never do, ever, even if they get away with it, they can't lead with a left hook in front because you know what you're in front of? You're in front of the right hand. And you know what? If you ever learned anything about simple geometry, straight beats round. A straight right hand beats a round hook. And when I never, ever, 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 ever allow my fighters to lead with left hook. I drill them to they're sick of hearing me. You can't lead with a left hook in front of a guy because if you do... You might get hit a right hand. And that's exactly what happened. He led with the left hook in front. And now you can run it, Rob. Thank you so much. He led with the left hook in front. And he threw the nice body shot I talked about, right? And then he, he the knee, everything I talked about. But he's still together. He's on the ropes. He's still together. And now he's going to lead with the left hook. Bang! The right hand gets there right on the chin, and I guarantee you he never saw it. I guarantee you that the last thing Pereira remembered was he was about to land the left hook, and it never landed. And then somebody had to shake him and wake him up and say, son, uh, you have to get up, and uh, it's over. And then the follow-up, he reloaded, He followed, and the second one was placed behind the ear. That's a, that is a damning place to get hit because when you get hit there it destroys your equilibrium so he's gone now he's completely gone now it all starts with the opportunity given him the mistake by Pereira Pereira opened up the door to his own demise he didn't realize it he probably does now he opened the door to his own demise by leading with a left hook there it is there was no open door before. Now the door was open, and that's what Izzy was trying. Izzy knew he was ordained for this. Izzy knew that that moment would, and there it was. There it was. Like, okay, I know what to do. I prepared for this moment. I kept myself together, and he shot the right hand in that open window, that open door. He landed it. He reloaded. He landed the second one. Then he came with the hammer fist. And let me, let me, qualify something with that uh, it's important a lot of people thought oh that was anger that was unnecessary that was anger that was that no it wasn't no it wasn't no it wasn't that was Izzy being prepared so locked in it had nothing to do with anger matter of fact I would argue it's the opposite he was ice cold he it was no emotions of anger at all it was that was that was man that was brought that was brought along by his mindset of kill or be killed. 
And I don't mean literally, but you guys know what I mean. Kill or be killed. That I'm in there with a killer. I'm in there with a guy that knocked me out uh, twice. I conquer or be conquered. I have to be of the mindset. I have to make sure that this guy is, that I finish him. He's a dangerous guy. He finished me twice. I have to be locked into the mindset, a cold mindset, not an angry one, a cold as ice mindset that when my opportunity comes, and it will come, I have to make sure that he's gone. I have to make sure that he's gone. Because, and I'm going to take it to another deep place that I think is, 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 is a belief of. I really... Gonna, I, I really mean it. For Izzy, I think that it was all about live or die. Now, what do I mean by that? Literally, no. But there's, different, there's a different form of living, Ken. Everyone thinks living is only the physical form. That's the main form. We have to breathe. We have to be alive. I get it. But there's a spiritual form. There's an emotional form. There's another form of living because there's some people that are just existing. In the real world of what I consider and we consider to be really vibrant and living, existing is not it. It's existing. I know you're still bringing oxygen in and you're still running blood through your arteries and through your, through your heart and everything else, but you're not truly living. You, if you're existing, you're not living. You're either existing or living. And if you're existing, you're already dead. You just don't know it yet. And for Izzy, that's what it can. I know I went deep today, but I'm telling you, we got to get him on. I, I, you, uh, Rob sent this to him. Let him hear it. And and let him, let him tell us whether or not he concurs or he doesn't with what I'm saying. But for him, it was about either existing or living and there was no there was there was no other options for him it was it was literally in his mind live or die live or die and so he understood that if he didn't win this fight he he was to a certain extent he was only going to be existing and he wanted to live so it came to having to make sure that this was final. This was final. There was one shot at it, and he couldn't mess up. So that's why the hammer fist. The hammer fist was preordained. Like it was automatic. Like, I, the, you know, I, I got to make sure that this is done. It's got to really be done. 